good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We are reading in the Gospel of John. Last time we read uh, chapter 12. At the end of chapter 12, Jesus is saying that whoever believes in him believes not only in him, but in God the Father. And he says that he has not spoken of his own authority, but, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. So he was speaking what he was supposed to speak from God the Father. Um, and we are, that's the end of chapter 12. And we are ready to read chapter 13. And we're just reading to understand the context and understand what's being said. Um, that way we can follow our Lord better and, and know what's expected of us and how we should be. So this is the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour, hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. That's worded a little strangely. Um, my understanding is that um, what Jesus said to him is that he would have no place with him. They would have no further... Um, they, he would that Peter would not be walking with him anymore if they did not if if he did not permit this to happen this was something that was going to happen you know it's kind of like the Lord is saying uh yeah you will or we can you know you or you know we're not going to be together we're not going to be you're not going to be my disciple my apostle um, basically was the idea this this says this kind of odd now I've been reading a lot lately in the Amplified Bible because if you really want to get more clarity on some things um, and by the way I'm not touting that as saying that it's the perfect most you know perfect thing in the world but to me <clears throat> it has really added a lot of good clarity to things and um, I don't feel like it's trying to twist the meaning of things or or skew things I feel like it's really trying to um, amplify or uh, clarify what is there. So just my thought on the matter. I know I'm reading out of an English Standard Version here. Um, at some point in the future I may switch to an Amplified Bible simply because I think it does provide a clearer uh, way of stating some of these things. Nonetheless, I did not mean to get off on a tangent there. Uh, just letting you know that may happen when it does happen. If it does happen, I will let you know, Lord willing, if that, that comes about. All right, so Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So <laughs> Peter's like switching gears on us there. He's going like, well, if that's the case, then just take care of everything, you know. And Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. You know, points kind of pointing the finger at Judas without pointing the finger at him, you know, making that statement, letting, letting them know that something was up. Um, so this is... Uh, this is an example where Jesus is setting an example of being a servant. And that's what anyone who is truly a leader is truly a servant to the ones they are leading. They are not 
you know, they're not just to lord it over them. And this is this is mentioned and, and discussed later in the epistles. Um, you know, you're not just supposed to lord it over and rule other people. Um, if you're truly a servant, then, I mean, if you're truly a leader, then a, a big part of that job is being a servant to the people you're leading. Excuse me. That is, um... That's why they call it civil service. When you go into a governmental positions and things, you're supposed to, as a leader of your community and of your uh, the folks you're representing, um, you are supposed to serve them in a unselfish manner. So just just throwing that out there. That's the way it should be. All right. So we're going to continue on with verse 12. Oh, and 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 some people will take. Um, this example and they will do I've heard of them doing like foot washings and stuff and um, I understand the idea is to say that hey yeah we can be as humble as Jesus and we can we can do this to prove that we are as humble and that we can be a servant and I don't know of anything wrong with that I I, I struggle personally with letting anybody mess with with my feet <laughs> that's just me all right so uh, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it for some people that is something that they do um, again as a way of remembering Jesus and as a, a way of uh, um, trying to be humble and follow the Lord and and I can't say that there's anything wrong with that I mean we have this example here of Jesus doing that and he was trying to, you know, let us know as a leader, you know, you need to be humble and serve the ones you're leading. So, anyway, verse 12. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. So he's extending, you know, just like he says that he is from the Father, and what he says comes from the Father. He is extending that down to the apostles and his disciples and us that follow him that truly follow him and try to you know um, try to also share the message um, he's extending that down to them but they were the apostles it's mainly I mean you know to my mind <laughs> because I'm not know anybody but uh, to my mind he's he's really speaking a lot of the, a lot about the apostles and the disciples but we in this in this day and age we are his disciples also um, so those so that does you know but but he also explains the foot washing probably better than I do um, just that you know but he he wants them to understand And he says, For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. And that's why some people do that. And there's there's nothing wrong with that if, if you do that type of thing. And because he just says, you know, just as I have done to you, so that you should also do just as I have done to you. So there you go. <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that. It may seem kind of odd to some of us because we wouldn't think of that necessarily. Um, I think of the spiritual meaning behind this more than the actual doing um, of it. That's just me. All right, so. Verse 21. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. 
the disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? They used to recline when they... I, I don't... <laughs> Let's face it, I'm I'm not that old. I, I don't always get it, but they used to recline when they ate. They really did. Um, so it so the way they did things were slightly different. It was not unusual for them to recline at table and, and talk and discuss. And, and uh, maybe they would even, you know, they were close friends and, you know, one of them might, you know, lean back on the other and, and you know, talk privately or whisper or whatever. <coughs> So anyway, the the in um, the uh, inference is that the right use? I think that's correct. The what this kind of infers to me, or hints at that um, that this was kind of a little more private. The disciple leaning back against Jesus asked him this in a little more private way, like a little bit of a whisper or something. It doesn't say that, but I'm just saying that's kind of the feeling I get from it. And that's just my thought. So, whenever I say something, it's just my thought. It's just my thought. I don't. I don't know that. I'm not claiming to know something that's not here, but it does seem that way to me. Anyway, so I'm going to pick back up verse 25. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, "Lord, who is it?" Jesus answered, "It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it." So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, now this is talking about Judas, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. It was not unusual, especially uh, this was the this was the Passover, and uh, from what I've read, it's not unusual that they would they would give or do something to the poor, especially at the Passover. I'm not sure why that was a custom, but it was it was just something that was not unusual. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Now that was that was Judas. Verse 31, when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Well, I didn't read that right. Hold on a second. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Okay, I still don't feel like I'm reading that correctly. Maybe they phrase this weirdly in, in the English version here. Let me try that again. This is verse 34, by the way. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. Oh, there we go. I finally read it and feel like that was accurate. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I don't know why that was so difficult for me. I'm sorry. The punctuation is there. Uh, I can see it. Nonetheless, so then in verse 36... Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. So, we know this is the famous... Thing between Jesus and and Peter, and that we know that that is actually what happens. Peter, I think Peter was 
sincere. I think he believed that he would do that. But when Jesus was arrested and when all that, all those things happened, um, all the disciples were afraid and they, they scattered. Now, you have to give Peter credit. He at least followed at a distance. And, I mean, he had some uh, gumption, some, you know, some strength there, uh, courage to do that. But, uh, you know, we, we know how that goes. Um, so... <clears throat> Let's see, we need to back up just a moment. There was something, the new commandment, yeah, the new commandment, and the one I had so much trouble reading, uh, that uh, we love one another, just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. And by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the one thing that that uh, we really need to make sure we focus on, I think, that would draw people uh, more into the church of God if we uh, the church of Christ into God's church you know Jesus church uh, doesn't matter what we call it as long as we recognize we're talking about the, the true church um, as we forget this we have you know we have too much and I, I, I you know I'm, I'm sure everyone has done it at some point or another we have a little too much of that uh, thing where we maybe aren't as loving towards each other as we should be. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just saying, just saying that's something that we could uh, focus on and always improve upon that would that would help draw others to us and help draw others to, because if we draw them to us, the church, we're going to be drawing them to Jesus. That's the ultimate, the ultimate goal. That's the main thing. Um, but we are his representatives, so if we're not attracting anybody you know what I mean? That that then we're defeating the purpose. We're not really fulfilling our purpose if we're not shining that light and getting people's attention and kind of pulling them to the Lord. Because since we are His disciples and representatives, we're the we're the ones here that have got to do that. Okay, so this is this has been the Gospel of John, chapter thirteen. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. And remember, God loves you.